Hi guys, my name's Charlie, and today I'm going to be going over some tips for programming realistic sounding cymbal swells. So what is a cymbal swell? A cymbal swell is when a drummer plays the cymbal in such a way as to almost sound like a reverse cymbal that gradually gets louder. This can be tricky to program convincingly because they're inherently extremely dynamic, as well as not being locked to any particular note subdivision. I usually go in and add cymbal swells if I choose to after programming everything else, because uh, I'd want the notes to stay exactly where I put them and not be affected by any kind of group quantizing that I might apply. So the first thing to do is to make sure grid mode is disabled because we don't want 16th note cymbal swells because then it will sound not at all like a cymbal swell. If you really want, you can also disable the grid like that so you're not even looking at it. I like to keep that on just so I can get an idea of how loud the cymbals are going at different parts of the bar. Decide on your finishing point, so I want it to be here. So I'm going to just play this little bit here. The idea is that we have a cymbal swell going into this second, uh, going into this third bar here. So in that gap, I want the cymbal swell to start just before halfway through the bar and just swell up into the next hit. So we're going to use the left hand crash, which is here, and the right crash which is there. So first thing we're going to do is start dropping in notes here, completely ignoring the grid, and just see what it sounds like. I'm going to lower the velocity so it doesn't sound quite as weird, just for testing. So that still sounds quite weird, but now what we're going to do is we're going to copy those notes and stick them on the right hand crash as well. So, there they're about in time. We don't want them to be in time because the drummer is going to alternate left, right, left, right, left, right with his hands. So you want to make sure you got left, right, left, right, left, right, like that. So now we'll just have a listen. So that sounds a little bit strange, but I have a feeling that's because of the velocity rather than because of the timing. So now we're going to play with the velocities. So just a note here, with a cymbal swell, even right at the end at the loudest point, the drummer is not going to be whacking the cymbal like, like that sample there. So even there, that's at a velocity of 72, that's quite hard that the drummer is hitting from the sounds of it, which is why the cymbal swell sounds a little bit strange as it is now. So what we're going to do is select all of one of the cymbals, go to the pencil tool and draw in a velocity curve. Just something like that for now. And then we do the same thing with the other symbol, but don't use exactly the same curve. So I'm not going to do that because that's not how the drummer would play it. I'm going to make it a little bit different. And now we'll have a listen. I think we can afford to go a little bit louder at the end. And at the beginning, even though those notes are uh, fairly quiet, you can clearly hear one, two, three, four, and it sounds like an out of time subdivision. So we're going to speed them up. And lower the velocity. We've got one more hit there, and I think we're good. There we go. So these methods will work on any symbol, but something you need to bear in mind is that the velocity curves in whatever drum sampler you're using will vary depending on both the symbol and the sample pack. So you may have to adjust the velocities with this in mind. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. Let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to check out the Brickwall website, Facebook, and Instagram, and we will see you soon.